Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Awesome in Seattle podcast. This is your host, Christian Awesome of the Awesome and Awesome Group at Wilson Realty, and we are a Seattle area real estate team. We work all around Western Washington, not just Seattle. Um, today, we're talking about something that if you follow anyone in the real estate space on Instagram or social media, I guarantee you've seen someone post some very <laughs> clickbaity uh, headlines yeah. about this. And you've probably gone, wow, that seems like a great deal. And we're talking about assumable mortgages. So I've been asked this so many times lately. I guarantee you have as well. Yeah. Uh, let me introduce my guest. I got Mr. Dan Keller, the man, the myth, the legend of New American Funding. Thank you, Dan, for being here. This is going to be fun. This is going to be quick, but fun. Yes, this is not going to take long. <laughs> yeah, uh, It could get boring real fast, so we're going to keep it quick. <laughs> <laughs> it could, it could. Yeah. But this is why we want to talk about this, because yeah. it's all over social media. Yeah. Assumable mortgages. How can you get yourself a 2% interest rate or a 3% interest rate in this market? All right, we're gonna lay out the exact truth. We're gonna drop yeah. some truth bombs, maybe burst your bubble, unfortunately. Yeah. Maybe not, maybe not, but let's let's go into it. So Dan, first off, what is an assumable mortgage? Yes, yeah, so this will be the anti-clickbait version of <laughs> Sorry everything. Sorry to disappoint that you'll, yeah, you. Yeah, everything you'll see out there. So yeah. you're, you're right, Christian. A lot of the times, anything you see online from a mortgage lender or a real estate agent is typically clickbait to get you to either go to their website or to call them or whatever. So yeah, yeah. an assumable mortgage is, let's say Christian, you own a home, okay? And you own a home that's worth a million dollars and you owe $500,000 to the lender still, yep. okay? And, uh, and you have your home for sale. And someone comes to you and says, I'll buy your home. Would you do participate in an assumable mortgage? Meaning I see that you have a 2.5, 30 year fixed rate. Rates are at 7% right now. I'd like your rate. Well, and you're like, hey, maybe I can use that as a marketing feature exactly. to sell my home. Maybe to yeah. get more money. Yep. Here's where the wheels fall off on the assumable mortgage cart. Okay. So sellers think it's a good idea because they maybe got some bad advice from their real estate agent. Like, hey, you could use your 2.5% 30 year fixed right now as marketing. Mm -hmm. Sellers really don't need extra marketing right now. The market <laughs> is really helping you out pretty nicely, right? True. The lack of yeah. inventory and all that stuff. Number one. Number two, here's what you need to know, Christian, as a seller. Mm -hmm. If you want to participate and allow a buyer to assume your mortgage, yep. your nice, low, sexy 30 year fixed rate, yep they still have to bring a substantial amount. They still have to buy the house from you for your sale price. Let's say yeah. it's a million dollars. Yep. You but my owe loan 500. is only 500, so where's that other they 500 to, come that from? That means they need to bring $500,000 to the table. You can't get a loan for that? So depending on the type of mortgage, so most assumable in this, I know this is your next question, what mortgages are assumable. Yep. Most mortgages in America are not assumable. Yeah. Okay, so conventional loans, They're not government, assumable. Uh, uh, jumbo loans, mm -hmm. okay, those are not assumable. Mm -hmm. FHA loans, okay. VA, yep. and USDA loans are assumable. Okay. Those are government backed loans. Most government backed entities don't want you or don't allow for you to have a second mortgage attached. Oh, so conventional loans allow for a second lien. Jumbo loans allow me allow for a second lien. Most government loans don't. Okay. Yep. So that's an asterisk to look into. Mm -hmm. So that means Mr. Buyer, cool. This would look good. This sounds good, but you have a substantial down payment to bring. Now, here's the risk to the seller. Let's say you're a veteran, you served in the US Armed Forces, you yep. have a VA loan that's yep. at 2.5%. Your VA eligibility or entitlement mm -hmm. is going to stay tied up in that home if you were to assume it and so you're you still on that. if you my VA loan, I can't then get a new VA loan because you can only have one at a time. Well, you can have multiple, but your entitlement and your eligibility is still taken up for that particular home. So if you have uh, some left, if you have bonus entitlement left over to go out, but in most cases, yeah, you're gonna have it tied up. Mm -hmm. So also you're gonna be on that mortgage loan, depending on the different, the, how you assume the loan, mm -hmm. how you set that up, you're gonna be on that mortgage loan now with the assumable buyer. Mm. So I'm still on the hook if they stop paying the mortgage? Is that what you're saying? So loan's still in your name. Ooh. Yeah, with them on it now. That's scary. So here's the other thing, they don't come to me the mortgage guy or a bank or a credit union to get the new loan. The buyer has to work with your servicer, your lender. So another hurdle you have to overcome is some lenders are saying, nope, even though you can assume we are not participating We're in not that. We're not doing it. Yeah. yeah. And then the third or fourth hurdle, the borrower actually has to qualify now. 
So credit income asset qualify. Yeah. Well, if they don't have $500,000 down, they can't qualify. Yeah. So and one of the questions I know you wanted to ask is which loans are assumable. We yes. talked about that. What would be the next steps? Like, how would you do that? Mm -hmm. Well, you need to call the servicer. You need to make sure they get pre-approved at the servicer. You need to make sure the servicer is okay. And again, the servicer is, if I'm the seller and you're assuming mm -hmm. my loan, it's whoever I pay my mortgage payment to. Yeah. That's the servicer. Mm -hmm. So it, even if it's an FHA loan, you're not calling FHA, you're calling Chase Bank or mm -hmm. Bank of America or whoever yeah. the, the servicer yep. is, the one that I'm paying That's that it. to. Yeah. And then you gotta try and get to the right person, which I can tell you is not the easiest task. So yeah, it's tough. It could potentially happen. Probably won't. 16 years in the mortgage industry. Hundreds of conversations around assumable <laughs> mortgages. I've never participated in one. They just fizzle out. They yeah. just typically don't yeah. work. Now, what would the ideal situation? I, let's yeah. wrap with let's, this. Let's say one that you could do. That you could do. Mm -hmm. I think in a declining market, Yep. So, which we're not in. We are not in. We're not Prices in the declining market. Yeah. But let's say you, again, we'll use you yep. as an example. You're a veteran and you bought a home mm -hmm. or you were maybe a first time home buyer and you used FHA to buy your first home mm -hmm. and you put a minimum amount of money down. The home doesn't have a ton of equity, yep. but you got a really low rate. Yeah. And you may have lost your job or you need to relocate or again, you need that as an extra marketing strategy to get you out from under yep. that mortgage obligation. Mm -hmm. That might be a good scenario mm -hmm. to to have a buyer or to market a buyer to assume your mortgage. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. There's so not a lot of times where it makes no, sense. No, I see a lot of these ads out there and these a lot of Instagram and TikToks on them. And I'm just like, that just wouldn't make sense. The person, how many first time homebuyers do you know are coming to the table with half a million or 200, 300, 400,000, dollars Not very few. Very often. Yeah. And most yeah. sellers of, I know that when you sell homes, mm -hmm. most sellers, they want their cash and they want to run. Yeah. And they want to be done with that mortgage. They want it paid off. They yeah. want to move on to another phase in their They don't life. want any extra risk if they yeah. don't have to. Yeah. Like if there's, if there are two buyers, two mm -hmm. offers on the table, one where the buyer is assuming the mortgage and the seller is staying on the hook for it, essentially, mm -hmm. and one where they're getting a new mortgage at a higher higher interest rate, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter to the seller, they're going to take yeah. the one where they have no yeah. risk at all instead of the one that, that leaves some risk on the table. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Dan. I'm sorry for bur bursting your bubble, anyone that <laughs> was hoping they could make this happen. The likelihood is very small that you could make this happen. It's not. 100% a, a no, mm -hmm. but it's probably a no, most yeah. likely a no. I appreciate your time on this. Yeah. I know you've answered more questions than I have on this, but I've even gotten this a lot. So yeah. thank you yeah. for your time. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Awesome in Seattle Told podcast. you it was going to be quick. I know. <laughs> we didn't. It, it doesn't take that long yeah. to yep. go over the, yeah. the potential options and pros and cons yeah. and, and that. So thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this episode. And uh, if you have questions, you can always reach out awesomenawesome.com slash schedule. You can schedule a time to have a strategy session with us. They're totally free, no obligation. You can also come to our beers and home buying class, beersandhomebuying.com. Uh, that's it for this episode of the Awesome in Seattle podcast. We will see you in two weeks. See ya.